What's up my print of people? In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to get the best results using Ninja Flex, the most flexible filament out there. This stuff is strong, dang. All right, let's get into it. Yeah. For those of you out there that don't know what Ninja Flex is, it's a company that makes flexible filament made out of thermoplastic elastomers. Now they've developed a special blend that creates a super strong, yet incredibly flexible filament. Out of the 11 available colors, I chose lava because it's bright orange and I think it looks really cool. And in addition to the different colors, the filament comes in two different sizes, a 3mm for Bowden tubes like my Ultimaker and a 1.75mm diameter for direct drive extruders. One of the defining elements of any filament is how easily you can print with it. Now Ninja Flex is not as easy to load as PLA and that's mainly because of my Bowden extruder. But I've made an easy process that if followed, it will help you and your prints be successful. Okay, so here's my process. You need to prepare the hot end by removing any of the existing filament that's already in there. And then also you need to start the Ninja Flex flowing out of the nozzle. Set your hot end to 260C for the first layer and then 245 for the rest of the print. 15 millimeters a second for the first layer and then 20 millimeters a second for the rest of the print. 0.2 millimeter layer height. Set your filament diameter to 2.7 millimeters and your flow at 100%. Turn off retraction and you can print on a glass plate without a heated bed. To purge all the old plastic out of your hot end, go ahead and set your temperature to 260, but don't let it sit for very long. Filaments will melt and turn into glue if they're not passed through the nozzle and they just sit there. Go ahead and cut an angled tip into the Ninja Flex and feed it into the Bowden. Keep a good amount of pressure from the filament into the hot end and then keep advancing the extruder once the filament starts to flow. You will eventually see the filament color change to the Ninja Flex, and you'll keep manually advancing the extruder for a bit to ensure that all the old filament has been displaced. If you look at the nozzle closely, you'll notice that it's flowing and kind of making a curly cue. That's because there's still some blockage in the nozzle. Keep feeding until the filament starts flowing very smoothly, like you see here. Once the Ninja Flex begins to flow out of the nozzle in a constant steady stream, you can start your print. I've had the best success having the part sliced and everything ready to go at this point so I can immediately start the print while the nozzle is still flowing. I am fighting to get this off in time for this print to start and I barely make it. Looking closely at the first layers, you want the typical looking squished bead that spreads out evenly. You want to have more flow than normal so the beads overlap and ensure a perfect watertight shell. The next thing I want to show you is how to control the infill so it promotes a flexible print. Ideally this tire would be hollow, but the top of the tire would have a hard time bridging such a gap. If your infill is a random pattern, the tire will have some sections without any bridging support. If you click and hold the right mouse button, it will rotate around the selected part. If you hold shift and the right mouse button, it will allow you to translate across the print bed. Now using the scroll wheel, of course, zooms in and out on the selected part. If you click the part, you can drag it anywhere, and as long as it stays yellow, you'll be able to print it fine. On the left side where it says fill density, you use this option to control how dense the part is with infill. Since we want the tire to be mostly hollow and very squishy, we set the infill to 2%. Now as you see here, there's just a couple lines cutting through it, but they're not necessarily in the right spot. If I go back and increase the infill percentage, you can see that I more evenly fill out the volume inside the tire, but then it's going to be really tough and still it'll be rubbery, but it won't be as soft as if it's hollow. So that's not what I want to do. To make an equally squishy tire all the way around and help support the top layer when bridging, I reorient the tire with respect to the infill. The infill is locked into position relative to the build platform, so if I move the tire to where lines intersect, I can put them right where they'll be most beneficial. This is a really useful trick for any type of part that you're printing with low infill. Taking a look at these tires a little more closely, you can see that the top layer is not perfect. It is perfectly squishy, and if we flip it around and take a look at the bottom, this layer you can see is perfect. When I mount them to the mini rock crawler, I make sure and put this side facing out. On this tire, I learned that if you print with more top layers to help close all the holes, the tire becomes more rigid. You can see that the tire with fewer top layers is easier to flex. By changing just a few parameters of the print, such as infill, shells, and top and bottom thicknesses, you can get different results depending on what you want. 
Another example I made are vibration dampeners. I designed these to be used on a quadcopter. Using the same principles that I learned from the tires, I can vary the stiffness by changing print settings. This is my acetone vapor polishing chamber. I got this big glass jar, but it did not come with an o-ring to seal the lid. I figured I could print an o-ring, but I didn't know how the Ninjaflex would hold up to the acetone fumes. So I soaked one of my vibration dampeners in acetone for 24 hours, and surprisingly, it didn't melt. The layer adhesion became a little weak, but because it didn't melt, I decided to give it a shot. I've used this chamber on a few ABS parts already, and the o-ring doesn't show any signs at all of damage. I'm pretty sure this Ninjaflex o-ring will be able to hold up to a lifetime of vapor treatments. Thanks for watching, I hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer them. If you enjoy the videos that I'm making, please click the like and subscribe buttons, those help me out a lot. Also, for extra bonus points, share this video with all of your friends. And, if you want to see all the crazy projects that I'm working on while I'm in between videos, make sure to follow me on Twitter and Facebook. I post a bunch of pictures of projects that I'm working on that don't quite make it into the videos. And for those of you that are still watching, I've got some sweet bonus footage of all my quadcopter crashes. They're amazing. You're going to want to watch them. Here you go.